I didn't know this, but the bees, uh, they can count, they can c categorize, they, they also recognize people's faces, you know, animals' faces, and uh, they can tell the difference between shapes. Um, and there you go. Uh, this fish, fish can count up to three, they said. <laughs> now dogs do math and can learn hundreds of words. So this is when I knew that the Rolf story was true, is because here there's a ton of research around dogs, right? I mean, it's very, very common. But here in this uh, research, they were talking about how the, all these things that dogs feel in their brain, you know, they, they do CAT scans on dogs and things like that. And again, I don't have time to go in depth about it, but they, do, they can do math. They can tell errors in math. So like if you say one plus one is three, they can also tell that that's wrong. And they can learn up, the smartest dogs can learn up to 250 words in their meaning. So not only they can learn, but they actually know, they tie a meaning to it. Um, and the smartest dogs are, the, the smartest breeds of dogs are these border collies here that you see. That's what they said. Dolphins can recognize themselves in the mirrors. Um, so dolphins are very smart too, right? I think everybody's heard dolphins are very smart. The only animals that are, are that smart, that can recognize themselves, that have that high self-awareness is um, dolphins, great apes, and elephants. Um, horses never forget their human friends. You know, horses, like I said, they're very, very smart. Um, obviously, I'm not going to go in depth here, but that it's, it's very interesting that they will always remember they'll be, you know, even lawyer, more, more loyal than dogs. Um, and elephants can speak Korean. So this uh, elephant here, <laughs> yeah, yes. Well, no, because he's like in a Korea, right? he's in Korea, and uh, they're teaching him words. And they actually will prove that they, he understands the words. And he only knows five words so far. But they thought it was quite a feat because he doesn't have lips. He only has a trunk and, you know, the bottom lip. And they, they're very impressed with that. He knows, like, hi. He knows commands, like, sit, you know. And so he, they do really believe that he understands it. And, I mean, the, the snooze, I think, is not too – I mean, it's interesting that he can talk, right? But – um, elephants are very smart animals, and they actually, th the research that they do on them too is that they show a lot of empathy. They're very kind animals as well. They, they uh, console uh, an other animals that are hurting and things like that. So very curious information. All right, so how about consciousness? Um, so consciousness is a little bit of a different animal. Uh, but consciousness... The, the most recent, I would say, um, information from science about consciousness, it came from this uh, conference here in Cambridge on July 7th, 2012. These, yeah, these here are literally, <laughs> they're all brain scientists. Um, they're neuroscientists, neuropharmacologists, neurophysiologists, neuroanatomists and uh, you know they're really like super brain smart right these folks um, you could probably recognize that uh, Stephen Hawking was there as well right so Stephen Hawking is the picture below here so all these scientists gathered to understand uh, or to try to come up with a, a statement right this um, declaration about consciousness in human and non-human animals okay so Let's leave this, let's think about it. I'm gonna come back to it and tell you exactly what they declared. But before I go into too much depth on consciousness, I define to you what intelligence is, right? So now let's define consciousness because it's different. All right, and consciousness is super hard to find a definition on, you know, to, on research because everybody has a different meaning for consciousness. Psychologists have different meaning than, um, than scientists. And, they, and obviously spiritism has different meaning as well, and I believe it's mainly because Kardec was trying to differentiate between um, self-awareness, individuality, and you know, spiritual, your spiritual self. So, again, I'm going to try here. This is coming straight from the Spirits book. Um, the term consciousness means being aware of your existence and individuality. Now, self-consciousness means being conscien having consciousness of the future as it relates to self-progression, the perception of the extra-material things, and the knowledge of God. 
It requires a higher intelligence, therefore, a freedom of will and, a and action. And action, sorry, that's a typo. Um, so again, consciousness different than self-consciousness. And again, I think that's Kardec trying to differentiate. That's the, the translation that I have. It could be that in different spirits book also have different uh, words for, for this. But for a matter of my, uh, my talk here, let's keep to consciousness is uh, you know, knowing that, you, that you, you're, you have your own individuality and that you're yourself. And then self-consciousness is obviously the spiritual side, right? Ha knowing where, where you are um, as in relation to others and, uh, and knowing the existence of God. Now Google defines it, and I think this is probably the easiest one to understand. Google defines it as uh, the fact of awareness by the mind of itself and the world. So example here, consciousness emerges from the operations of the brain. You know, so that's how Google describes it. Now, Christoph Koch, he is also the chief scientific officer of the Allen Institute of, uh, of Brain Science. And he, he it was one of the, um, the ones that crafted that um, declaration of consciousness by the scientists. And he defined it, he has a blog and if, if you go to this blog of his and look, Consciousness is Everywhere is the title of the article that describes what went on in that conference and, um, and explains in very simple, more simplistic manners, you know, what they were trying to say. Um, and here you go. He says, Con by consciousness, I mean the ability to feel something, anything, whether it's the sensation of an azure blue sky, a toothache, being sad or worrying about the deadline two weeks from now. So a little bit more concrete, right, more elaborate, right? So what? emotions, you know, thinking, you know, pondering and, and, and you know, have, so it's a little bit more, um, maybe even more descriptive than Google um, and stuff. Okay. So now, going back to what exactly um, they, they talked about in the Declaration of Consciousness. So in the Declaration of Con Consciousness, and I'm this here is what exactly they declared, but it's a little bit hard to understand. So I'm just gonna say, you know, what, with my own words, um, uh, it's a document. Uh, let me see here. Uh, the ability to so to put it. Oh, sorry, sorry. Just making sure. Okay. The Declaration of Consciousness was an affirmation by all these brain scientists that, based on scientific knowledge, they have today. So based on all the research that I talked about and probably more, right? Um, that humans are not unique in possessing these feelings um, and, the, and that generate consciousness. In fact, that all animals, regardless of their brain stru structure, share some minimal amount of sentience with people. So um, it was big news, right? Um, because it wasn't what, what people thought before. So now one thing that goes very, very much in, uh, in sync with, with them is the fact here that um, Kardec on question 585, you know, also states he on he he uh, he actually underneath the question the question is more about the rains the, the different four rains of uh, of uh, you know earth, you know the mineral the uh, vegetal vegetal and the vegetable the animal and the human rain so he divides it in four, um, and he says here animals composed of inert matter and endowed with vitality also have a sort of instinctive intelligence limited in its scope, but giving them the consciousness of their existence and of their individuality. So he says that. And then here, men possessing all that is, that is found in plants and animals is raised above all the other classes by special intelligence without fixed limits, which gives him the consciousness of his future, the perception of extra material things and the knowledge of God. So the big difference is m men with humans have self-consciousness, like what I explained before. Okay, and we'll go back. I'll, I'm going to summarize because I know I've been talking a lot. So, in summary, Genesis, the Genesis and Spirits book state that that animals are driven by instinct, and some animals have displayed uh, predetermined thoughts and actions dependent on of a situation or circumstance, accrediting them intelligence. And again, modern science also recognizes that some animals have ag arguably some signs of intelligence and uh, self-awareness, problem-solving, memorization. We talked about all that, right? So those those two agree. 
science and uh, spiritism. Um, mo modern, uh, both Kardec and modern science also agree that animals have consciousness. They are self-aware and conscious of their individuality. Um, science would go a little further and say that they're conscious of the world around them and at least have a minimal amount of present thoughts or feelings of others. Kardec here, um, and then third, Kardec explains that in the Spirit's book that nature is divided in four reigns. And the main difference between the animal and human reign is that man has a consciousness of the future progression of God and of uh, um, spiritual matters, right? So, I mean, animals do not have the knowledge of God, right? So that's the main thing that I want you guys to leave with out of all that I talked about in this topic here. Um, so in order, you know, something, I know guys all have dogs or, or, or cats, you know, the people that do have them know this very well. I'm going to show a video here. But look at how interesting. Do we have sound? I think I have to. So this is a funny, a funny video. The owner of, uh, what do you guys hear? So this is a funny video, you know, the owner is looking for who got into the cat's tree, right? All of us have gotten home one time and our animals have done something wrong, right? I was so no, Lizzie, you have a higher a spirit dog, <laughs> superior spirit dog there. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so we've all we've all ran into that situation, right? So let's see what happens here and how conscious these animals are. So he's looking for the suspects. <laughs> was it this one, Macy? You guys think it's Macy? Does it look like it was Macy? <laughs> Does it look guilty? Does it fit? I don't think it is. 